Hello and welcome back to Game of Trade, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. This video is going to be focused on the S&P 500 that has just been on a relentless run over the past couple of weeks. This has just been a crazy rally. If you were around our channel watching our videos throughout the month of September and October, one of the things that we were watching was the fear and greed index that was hovering near extreme greed. If you were around here trading the markets, you would have heard about China debt defaults, the Federal Reserve tapering announcement, the debt ceiling, so many people calling for much, much lower lows in this fearful market. There was just too much much money on the sidelines and all of that is now coming back into the markets in a hurry and that's causing some FOMO type of moves that we're seeing right now following the first bullish divergence between the price and the RSI since the COVID crash here. You can see price making a lower low, RSI making a higher low that fueled the beginning of this massive run here. You can see we have the exact same development between these two lows here a lower low on the S&P 500, a higher low on the RSI. This hasn't happened since March 2020. Could this potentially lead to a long-term top in the market as we see the total allocation to equities make an all-time high with equities making up 52% of the total financial asset allocation exceeding the highs that we saw in the dot-com bubble. So we're clearly getting closer and closer to some type of a longer term top here. Now we don't think it's quite done just yet. I think we're going to continue to see some crazy moves over the next few months. But is this rally here that we're seeing sustainable? Are we going too far up too quickly? That's exactly what we're going to cover in this episode. If you're interested in following this with us, hearing more about our research and analysis, make sure to smash that subscribe button. And now without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so I want to begin by taking a quick look at the S&P 500 here. The technical picture on this daily chart, we discussed the uh, bullish divergence here. So that's a nice intermediate term bullish development, right? It marks a significant low. I don't think we're going to come down under this low anytime soon. Perhaps in the next bear market will be coming lower than this. But I do believe that this marks an intermediate term low here. Now if we zoom in a little bit more, we can take a look at this nice bullish price channel. Quite a few beautiful reactions here at the top as resistance. We've got one, two, three, four reactions and we can use that same bullish price channel to identify nice significant lows here. Now you can see here we're coming towards uh, a clear level of resistance here on the S&P 500 as the RSI is making a significantly overbought reading here at around 76. Uh, the last three times this occurred was in June 2020, right before quite a nice correction in September 2020 before a nice correction. And right here uh, in April 2021, before a period of sideways consolidation and eventually a correction. Now, it doesn't guarantee that we're going to see a correction here, right? Just because it happened three times, yes, it increases the odds that it happens again, but it doesn't guarantee it. So uh, again, I want to quickly address some of the comments that we had in the last S&P 500 episode where we talked about the risk reward that was diminishing on this rally. Right, we were talking about the risk reward that was less favorable on the S&P 500 and we had quite a few people comment that they were going short. At the end of the day, you do what you want to do, but it's an incredibly foolish and risky thing to do in such a strong bull market and during such a massive rally here. With our members at GameofTrades.net, we're not looking for shorting opportunities on the S&P 500. We're looking for buying opportunities. This is not one of them. This was one of them. And perhaps if we see a correction here, we're going to see another nice buying opportunity in the next few weeks. So that's just a quick technical overview of what's happening on the S&P 500. Now let's 
get into what's happening in the bond market. And I wanna take a look at the 10 year yield in today's video that has recently broken down. So we've been talking about this for quite some time ever since we hit that resistance level on the 10 year yield. We've been discussing the potential for yields to come down. They went a little bit too far too quickly and now they're taking a breather. I think we're still gonna see rising interest rates heading into the end of the year, but it's normal to see counter trend uh, corrections along the way. Now, falling yields is typically bad for stocks, but it's good for tech. The problem is that tech is also at resistance here, right? Testing the top of this big bullish price channel that we've been looking at also showing a significantly overbought RSI reading. So when you have the market leader, the NASDAQ 100, I think it's, it makes up almost 30% of the S&P 500 when you see it at resistance and overbought like it is now. Again, it's not telling you that the risk reward on equities is favorable right now. It's actually quite unfavorable, but you know, it's definitely impressive to see this type of move here a very parabolic type of move. Considering our target for the end of the year on the S&P 500, it's still at around 5,000 points. We love to see these types of moves on the equity markets, but I understand that this can all be very confusing to anyone that's watching the markets right now, especially when you see this type of uh, indicator here showing you equity allocation at all time highs. It's almost impossible not to think that, that the equity markets are in a bubble. If you're confused about that, it's completely normal, but I can give you a very simple answer. It's all about the M2 money supply growth that we saw throughout 2020. This was really an unprecedented expansion of the money supply that's leading to monetary debasement. Seeing the NASDAQ 100 rise like this, that's monetary debasement. You can't buy as many tech stocks as you could before this monetary expansion because all of that capital is now hiding in corporate valuations. The exact same thing is happening on Bitcoin and we're gonna continue to see these types of crazy moves across all assets, including precious metals, cryptocurrencies, commodities. I really think that this is going to lead to some crazy opportunities throughout the next couple of years. And we're very much looking to take advantage of this at gameoftrades.net. From the research and analysis we've made based on historical data patterns, how monetary policy tends to work, how money tends to flow from one asset to another, how recessions tend to appear. We think this is only the first big violent move up in the M2 growth rate. We're gonna see much more uh, expansion in the monetary supply. And I believe it's very likely to lead to some big periods of price instability. Something we haven't seen over the past 20 years, we're very likely to jump from inflation to deflation, back to inflation again, because we're now entering a macro environment that we haven't seen in 100 years. So no traditional economist right now has actually lived through what we're about to see right now. And I think this is probably where one of our strengths is, is that we're obsessed with looking at the historical context of what's happening right now. So again, I think there's never been a better time to try and understand the market understand how to protect yourself from the next few years of price instability and how to actually take advantage of it. Make sure to test out our free trial at gameoftrades.net if you're interested in our service. Now I wanna take a look at the put call ratio. All right, so this is a great indicator of the market sentiment in the short term. It calculates the number of put options relative to the number of call options on the market. And I actually haven't changed this chart uh, since the last time we looked at it together uh, back in September right here where we had spikes in the put call ratio and I was talking about the fact that these spikes were buying opportunity. We looked at every moment where we had a big spike in the put call and what happened in the stock market following that spike and it corresponded every time to big bottoms in the market. Even the smaller spikes we're buying opportunities you can see here in March, 2021. Now we can do the exact same exercise 
with the bottoms in the put call ratio because when there's a lot of calls relative to the number of puts it tells you there's a lot of complacency in the market regarding the short term price action right it has nothing to do with the longer term trend but when you're at an extreme low like we are right now it tends to suggest we're quite complacent so here i've put vertical lines every time we get that type of reading we have one right now and you can see they tend to occur when the market is a little bit overextended now it doesn't lead to corrections every time look at these two it didn't lead to corrections here it led to a correction here it did not here it did in general in the short term it does tend to tell you that the risk reward is unfavorable so not only is the technical picture unfavorable but if we look at the market sentiment in the short term, the put call ratio is also telling us that we're not at a particularly favorable moment right now. So again, don't expect the market to just tank right now just because I said that the risk reward is unfavorable. That's not how this works. We focus on the longer term trends and we look for high probability opportunities to take advantage of those trends. We're still in the mindset of looking for more upside on the S&P 500. From a seasonality standpoint, the end of the year is typically the best moment to be in equities. It's the moment where the number of buybacks are the greatest in November and December, and it pushes the market higher when there's low liquidity during the holidays. Now we did get a tapering announcement from the Federal Reserve that clearly has not made quite an impact on the stock market, but we are gonna talk about how significant we think that announcement was and what it could mean for the next few months of trading on the s p 500 that's going to be the topic for the next episode if you enjoyed this video make sure to smash that like button now in the meantime i wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time